All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining and welcome to this um, IHE ITI domain introduction. Um, so this is the getting started high level overview of ITI. And uh, my name is Daniel Berzanu. I work at Ready Computing and I'm, um, I've been ITI planning co-chair for the last four years and now I'm um, leaving my uh, spot to the new co-chair, uh, Sylvie, and uh, John that started last year. I'm also a technical committee member, so I participate in um, IHE at multiple levels, and I have been the past probably 10 to 12 years, depending on um, my roles. I was a developer before, and now uh, I'm more uh, in a strategic um, consulting capacity. So what we'll cover today, um, the goal of this webinar is to give you enough information about ITI domain and its profiles to get you excited about implementing them and in your products and in your communities and hopefully even getting involved. So another goal is to connect you with the people that can help you get started on preparation for um, the Connectathon and in participating with the um, ITI community. So rather than going down in the technical details of each profile, uh, we'll, we'll show you where to find more information and help you get connected with the right people and websites that can fill the gaps. So we're hoping to exploit your curiosity and get you to join ITI's committee and participate and connect us on. So um, feel free to, to ask questions in the WebEx chat window as we go, and, and I'll also let you ask some questions at the end. Um, you'll notice we use a lot of acronyms in the IHE jargon, so if you're wondering about something, chances are so will other people listening to recording, so please don't be shy. Um, what we won't cover today, so details about other domains, uh, that those are, there, there's other webinars for that. Um, then there, we're also working on another webinar just on how to get involved and participate in the development cycles. There is also um, North American Connectathon and uh, the Hems Interoperability Showcase that will be also covered by another web, uh, webinar. And uh, there are other webinars that I'll be announcing as well and will be published on uh, this link over here. So IG.net slash webinars, very useful, um, go often. This webinar is meant to cover the IT infrastructure domain. But IG has lots of domains, including patient care coordination, radiology, quality research hub, um, PCD, et cetera. And, and there, there will be webinars for those as well. And in fact, there probably already are. Uh, the work product of any domain is the creation of an integration profile, often just called profiles. Each domain integration profiles are published in a technical framework. So our domain owns a lot of the integration profiles. There's a list of categories. And unlike other domains which focus on aspects of healthcare, ITI's profiles are used broadly. For instance, we'll pay attention to security and privacy matters. What areas of healthcare are, are important areas of healthcare we focus on and some of these profiles, like all of these profiles are actually reused by the other domains. And some of these profiles are, are the general basis for other domains profiles. I guess you could call it um, sort of like the back office of healthcare exchange. In fact, at IHE, I feel that we are solving interoperability problems for healthcare. And in fact, I think we're at a maturity level where we solve 
a lot of the problems. And that's why it's so exciting to participate in IHE. Document sharing. That is a very big focus. So sharing information between clinicians, facilities, et cetera, is becoming increasingly important over time. And you can see we have a lot of profiles dedicated to sharing. We don't have much time, but you can find more information on these items by reviewing the, edu the educational materials and the technical frameworks. I'll just say the XD stands for Cross Enterprise Documents. So we started with XDS.B, Documents Sharing Within a Community. XDS.B is one of our most tested and implemented profiles. Then we added profiles for use case, like point-to-point -point exchange on physical media or point-to-point -point on network, which those of you familiar with direct project will recognize as much as direct was based on IHE XDR profile. We then expanded into sharing documents between established communities, like between HIEs and, and use added use cases like subscribing to document and see when we and when, so we can see when we get updates. There's a lot of detail represented here. If any of these profiles match your use case you're interested in, start with volume one of the technical framework. That will give you an idea of the use cases they solve. So these are some of the enhancements we've done over the years. So multi-patient queries, delayed document assembly, um, metadata update, and we've got a couple that are actually new uh, that we just published, and I think I'm gonna take a moment to talk about those as well. So we've got restricted metadata updates. This profile provides a mechanism for changing document sharing metadata, both within and across community boundaries in a controlled manner. So certain metadata attributes have been restricted from modifications to allow for predictable and safe use in a wide range of operating environments. This way, communities can use this profile as part of a meet, meet, uh, as part of meeting legislative, legislative requirements for patient control and, and especially in distributed medical information systems across boundaries such as countries. Um, the second big update for 2018-2019 season is the asynchronous AS4 option. And this, this supplement, it's not actually a profile, it's a supplement um, introduces um, the OASIS Applicability Statement 4. That's AS4 stands for. And with current WS addressing a synchronous web exchange stack, is a specialization of asynchronous capacity of the web service stack. So it is based on WS addressing and MCOM, XOP, and left unchanged by the supplement. But the AS4 specification provides a more robust asynchronous way of operating, especially attractive for upcoming cross-border e-health ex information exchanges, such as the European e-health digital service infrastructure that uses um, XCA, XCPD, and XCDR profiles. And for countries where the option for OASIS AS4 reliable and secure messaging is common when crossing sectors beyond healthcare sectors, such as country borders. So we're really excited about these two profiles or supplements. And we've also got a um, metadata sharing handbook that was published that gives a lot of very useful information on how to use the XDS metadata and how to populate it correctly. We'll take a look at those and uh, let us know what you think. There's a process for comments. They're always, they're always welcome. 
I think it's important to mention some of the security and privacy profiles as it covers the A's of privacy and security, authentication, authorization, access control, and audit. IHE's APNAP profile is one of the most implemented privacy and security profiles in the real world today. And we've also delivered into basic consent privacy through the use of confidentiality codes at a very high level. And we've supplemented that with APCC in 2017, which is Advanced Patient Privacy Consent. That made um, consent a lot more flexible and able to attain a lot more use cases. And a lot of various technologies is used, are used by these profiles, including FHIR, REST, LDAP certificate, and so forth which brings us into REST-based exchanges. So REST has gained a lot of recent popularity with mobile devices, and these profiles are in other, other categories, but um, are listed together as they utilize REST, in many cases, uh, Fire DSTU 3, and I'm just gonna name them here. There's um, other presentations that go through much more detail. So we've got PIXM, uh, MACM, RESTful Query for Atna, MHD, PDQM. We said earlier, some ITI profiles provide technical underpinnings that are customized by other IHE domains like patient co care coordination, PCC, and quality research and public health, QRF. For example, RFD defines a general form-based exchange of data and the quality research and public health domain has defined profiles for exchange of custom forms for public health use care, such as early hearing detection, family planning, drug safety, vital record death reporting, and more using RD as base. The XDW profile, cross-enterprise document workflow, is for managing clinical workflow, and it's based on the human task standard. The patient care coordination domain has defined XDW-based workflows for e-referral and telehome uh, monitoring. And the radiology domain is defining an XDW-based profile for remote reading workflows. Again, all these integration profiles are published in the ITI technical framework. If you've never read one before, it, uh, there's a link, so just some guidance on how to navigate them so that you're not left with the technical framework altogether. The, over time, these have become a rather large documents. And this 10-minute webinar, which will help you get the information you need from technical frameworks more efficiently. So it's definitely recommended. And um, there's also a quick tutorial in Gazelle. I want to announce a couple of upcoming webinars where you can get a little bit more information. So there, there's one coming up on how to participate in IHE, ITI, and what our development cycle is. There's a short webinar on document sharing. Uh, there's one on MHD, which is XDS on fire, MXDE, which is MHD plus QEDM. There's another one coming up on AS4, and we're also preparing a webinar on Connectathon at a high level overview to help you prepare for that event. Also want to thank our sponsors. So we are an international uh, organization. We work in many countries. We've got many chapters. And uh, HIMSS is a major sponsor as well as Sip So um, active men members of the Planning and Technical Committee come from all over the globe. If you want to expand the list, we'll be happy to have you join us. So this ends my high-level overview of the of IHE's infrastructure domain overview.